Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Ciceri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. My name is Laura Ciceri. I'm the founder of Supply Chain Insights, and this is designed for supply chain leader so busy, on the go, want to be in the know. And today I am interviewing Alex Wazewski, and Alex works for the Digital PMO Group. Alex, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me, Laura. It's great to be here. And Alex and I are doing a series of podcasts up until our Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. And the goal of these podcasts is really to have Alex interview me on the blogs, because it's always nice to have somebody to talk to, so you're just not hearing me. But today, what we want to do is talk about the event that we have, which is the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit, which is focused on Supply Chain 2030 and helping people get ready, thinking about not just supply chain now, but thinking about the supply chain of the future and what we can learn from the past to unlearn, to rethink supply chain practices. So, Alex, you were able to make last year's event. Tell the group about your experience. Sure. Yeah, last year was fantastic. It was my first time attending the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. I was was really well versed in the agenda because Laura had kind of looped me in from the social media side of things and I had helped her do some of the pre-conference social media buzz creation and then also the the during the conference some of the live tweeting and kind of following along of speakers. So my experience was was jumping head in um, diving diving head first and it was it was really great. The content was was spot on, really on par for where the the current trends are with the the, the, the ever changing landscape of the supply chain industry in the in our world at this moment. But then also from the the speaker that she curated to the attendees that were there. It was uh, really holistic. And then, Laura, I know we're going to dive into it today, but really focused on networking and really focused on thinking about the future. And when you have those two things in mind, a lot of the conversations really come naturally because people are focused on solving the supply chain problems of 2030. They're not focused on, you know, selling or sharing what they need to do right now. It's really really with a future mindset and with a growth mindset, which was something that I appreciated about the conference. Now, Alex, you're much younger than I am, <laughs> and you work for the Digital PMO Group, and some people may not know you, but you know, you're relatively new to supply chain, and what was it yep. like last year for you to kind of jump into the deep pool with us? Sure. So I am a Gen Z, a member of the Gen Z family. I am relatively newer to supply chain, kind of just learning about through my education. I went to business school and kind of really dove into the data aspects of things and the digital transformation side of of things. But when I had a chance to start getting more of a formal education around how data, how systems integrate across the entire supply chain, that's where, in my eyes, some of this content really shined, Laura. You have digital transformation case studies that you walk people through. Last year, I know there was one around Schneider Electric um, that really brought the idea, brought the concept, and brought the formal education required for supply chain thinking into the modern day world with the data and the digital transformation that I think it was Barat was kind of talking through. He's the VP of supply chain performance for North America over there. So that was what I really appreciated about the conference, being being someone new to the space, being a Gen Z. So what would you say to another Gen Z that might be sitting there going, wow, I don't want to go to a conference where I'm new to supply chain, right? It's a little scary. What would you tell people? I would tell them that supply chain intersects or the, the, the topic of supply chain and really um, not, not so much the formal education of it, but the learnings that you can take away from uh, the, the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit are are so many. The intersections, and that's because of the intersections that the supply chain has across uh, so many different verticals, everything from sustainability impact, measuring your carbon footprint and, and kind of the logistic side of the house that, that many people normally think of with the supply chain. But then, you know, Laura, you had a fantastic example last year, which was with Xerox and how Xerox is not just thinking about the logistics side of things. They're thinking about the manufacturing and the 3D printing to reduce their, their supply chain footprint and their sustainability 
sustainability and increase their sustainability goals, move quicker towards their sustainability goals, in other words. So really, if you're not sure if the supply chain industry, or if you're going to really learn something, I would say you can learn something, you just have to apply it to the vertical that you're interested in learning about. Well, and, you know, one of my real issues with supply chain is that we've got a lot of bad conferences. And I really never wanted to do a supply chain conference. But the reason why I think a lot of the conferences are bad is that people will charge technologists very large sums of money to basically be a booth sponsor. And then they'll have paid speaking presentations. And we don't have any of that at the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. There are no sponsors. And we limit the number of technologists by company. And we ask the technologists to not send their salespeople, but to send their innovators or their product marketing visionaries. And the goal is for these technologists to roll up their sleeves with bright business leaders. And on the business leader side, we ask that people send the director or VP of digital transformation or a really rising superstar in a you know, world of supply chain thinking to really think differently. And then we have activities where these two groups, these bright technologists and these wonderful, you know, thinkers for supply chain have a chance to think together in a concept we call extreme networking, where we'll basically have these hand-picked speakers around the theme like digital transformation or supply chain excellence or outside in processes or changing the way we work. And then we'll have people ideate on what they heard and share at the tables. And so this concept of extreme networking, Alex, is a little different, but tell people about your experience mm-hmm. and you know, how they take full advantage of this concept of extreme networking. And the the extreme networking aspect was something that Laura you had talked about, but something I didn't didn't think I quite understood until being in the room. And really, you did a, a great job of explaining it. But it's it's in other ways some facilitated networking sessions that allows a curated group of of individuals to come to the table with their expertise and then allow them to shine and help each other in that moment. Um, That was really my big takeaway, Laura. I think that the way the audience kind of came together and had this shared mindset, I was was mentioning in the beginning about thinking of the, the supply chain of 2030, but then having their their sweet spots, uh, really knowing the tools that are in their toolkit leads to really fantastic group ideation sessions, leads to fantastic just coffee table chats outside once the speaker's done, and also allows for a little bit of a shared a shared understanding that, you know, and, and everyone says this at any conference, you can go talk to whoever you want, but I really felt that the past Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. And um, the goal, Alex, is that you move from table to table. And because it's assigned seating that by the time you get done with the event, there is no stranger. And that you have a very different set of conversations because you know what we're talking about is usually stuff that people say, oh, Laura, you make my head hurt. But if you're able to process it with other like-minded people, not only do you get new perspectives and I think actionable ideas, but you build a guiding coalition because people get very familiar with each other. Whereas in many conferences where it's theater seating or, you know, you sit in the same seat and it's all about people talking to you. I think you leave the conference still reading badges and not really remembering the context and the people and the conversations. Yes. But here, what we're trying to do is build a guiding coalition and tell the group a little bit about your experience in that regard. Yeah, it's it's a, a really key aspect. Kind of building building that guiding coalition, I would say, was something that I found surprisingly to be easier than not across across the conference. And that maybe have been for a few things. And and Laura, you mentioned it, right? The 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 seating that kind of plays into a role, but but also uh, for me, the 
the curation around speakers and being able to network and, and feel the intimacy with with them, not just feel like uh, a speaker is is uh, there to present and leave right after they they are learning, they are engaging with the content in the same way. So um, building a coalition of not only the rock stars that are at the conference, but also the people that are at your table that are you're talking to pr- pretty much throughout the whole entire time, they are also rock stars in their own element. You just have to talk to them to find that out. And the way I was able to do that, Laura, was really just by listening to people through those brainstorming sessions, or through, excuse me, through those case studies or through those group ideation sessions. And, you know, a few folks come to mind, obviously, uh, some some folks uh, right now, Stacy, she's at 09, and uh, talked to Ashley Yentz, who was over at Sleep Number, two very different people come from different very different companies, have different positions. But when I had conversations with them, really shined a light on how they are thinking about their role in supply chain and how I can change my mindset to really adapt to include theirs, but also appreciate theirs. Well, and that's what it's all about. We want to have people with diverse backgrounds from different geographies, uh, different backgrounds in terms of ethnicity. We want to also encourage people to have different conversations because there are no paid speaking slots. And I'm really pretty hard on the agenda and picking people. So my goal is that people walk out thinking differently and able to drive new action. Now, we did have a virtual experience last year. It was our first time Mm -hmm. to have really moderated virtual experience. And Alex, we're working on that right now. And what we want to do is enable the virtual experience so that we can have extreme networking virtually for people that maybe don't want to travel or we still have, you know, this dark cloud across the planet around COVID. So, you talk to the group a little bit about the virtual experience as it ties to extreme networking. Yeah, our we're, we're really excited about the virtual event this year. Last year, everyone, in, you know, post-COVID, everyone was getting their virtual event legs underneath them, figuring out how to do things, how to best do them. And using last year as a learning experience, we're really um, coming to the races, hitting the ground running this year. Our our virtual team that is is really focused on creating an environment for the virtual attendee that feels as if you're there. A few things that are basically not just uh, streaming from the event and then being pulled off to, to say, okay, well, it's cut to the, to the virtual family, but really then bringing those speakers into a, a one-on-one kind of one-off exclusive interview for the virtual family to make sure that those, the, the virtual folks, and, and they get the value added, they get that extreme networking feeling, that intimacy that everyone also in person is feeling. So that's one thing we're really excited about. In addition to that, there is quite a bit uh, really great um, work that's done on the agenda. Laura, I know we're going to be sharing some great things and the agenda is already out on the website, but we're going to be continuing to share updates over our social media about the agenda. And as new speakers come on board, that's always a big topic of interest. And then lastly, the only thing around social media that was uh, you know, a big learning for me last year that we're going to be kind of taking into this year is, is that the extreme networking aspect of virtual needs to be just as important as the in-person extreme networking. And there's a few different things that we're still tooling with, Laura, and and I know we're we're talking with Sarah, who's who's one of our partners on the virtual side as well, but working to include those people and make sure that everyone feels that they're coming to the table with an understanding of kind of who's at the conference and what what kind of networking and and therefore kind of the extreme networking, right? The, The ideation, the future realization, future value realization of your ideas and of your problems that you have an understanding of who can help you achieve those from a virtual environment instead of just seeing a name on a screen. So some great things in the works, not gonna, just gonna kind of tease them out right now, but uh, really excited. Well, I am too, Alex. And, you know, as we think about that virtual event, one of the things that we're gonna be doing is uh, showcasing the river of demand activities that we've been collecting over the last year. So I've been teaching some outside in workshops where I ask people to draw the river of demand and to talk about what would it 
look like to go from an inside out to an outside in process. And we have the drawings and the voiceovers of those drawings. And, you know, there's really, I think, five key learnings that I've gotten from this activity because the activity is designed to have people really think about, you know, demand as a flow and to think differently. Mm -hmm. And the five things that I've learned is organizations have a lot of data that they don't use and that the order and the shipment data, which is primarily used in supply chain decisions and the traditional decision support, because of demand latency and because of process latency, puts the organization on the back foot. But yet we've got all of this data and marketing and sales that we don't use, which is sad. The second thing that I've learned is that as the demand flows through the organization, it becomes less effective, more turbulent, and people will actually change the color of the flow from blue to brown. And it's because we introduce bias and we introduce, you know, some policy that can't really be activated because of people still very structurally encased into traditional technology discussions, which don't allow us to connect policy and rules to optimization engines. So, you know, it's like, what a shame that we've only automated demand to be consumed into distribution requirements planning versus demand as a flow across all of the individuals in the organization and to have it with minimal distortion. So we're going to show all the rivers, 30 of them, and have the voice overlay from different companies. But, you know, the third learning I have is that even though the rivers have different characteristics, all companies have the same problem in that we've automated things very functionally. There's no unified data model that connects things like DRP to TMS or transportation planning. We're not able to use outside in signals. And that, you know, the procurement and the contract manufacturing organizations sit in isolation and we need them to be connected with a good demand signal. The first thing that I've learned is that over the last decade that finance has become less aligned with the overall organization. And a lot of the work we've done in SNOP and IVP actually makes the water more turbulent and brown because of lack of clear definition of regional global governance or uh, tying the supply chain to a budget, which is not really aligned with the market. And so you can clearly see that in the drawings. And then I think the fifth thing that I've learned is just it's a great activity for people to really think differently. And so at the conference, we'll have the river demand room, which will allow people to look at everybody's rivers. And then we'll have a graffiti board for people to write and share. And we'll also be doing it virtually online where we'll have some animation and also have a graffiti board for people to share. And it's my hope that this helps to stimulate a rethinking of demand don't you think this is going to be fun, Alex? It's it's going to be awesome. And, and I think not only will it help them think differently, Laura, it gives it gives everyone, and it gave me, right, because we did a really similar, not necessarily the river of demand exercise, but the, the whiteboarding visualization exercise that is the scale of the river of demand helps people think about it so much differently. Obviously helps them visualize it in another way that helps them think about it in the way you were just referring to. So, so excited for it, that's for sure. The other thing we're gonna be showcasing and really challenging people on is thinking about new forms of technology in a different way to democratize work, redefine work. I have a case study of digital simulation where people have basically taken what used to be called network design, and now they simulate and they share simulations across the organization to look at vulnerability and variability. I also have a case study where people have used NoSQL to use a build a unified data model across disparate apps, because unfortunately, we've been very focused on how do we make you know dirty data, which isn't really dirty, it's just different, clean, and we can't really 
integrate, but we can interoperate. And so what's the difference between integration and interoperability and how do we use new forms of technology and analytics to free that data to be able to have a unified data model. And then we will also be showcasing some of the testing we're doing on building outside in processes where we're trying to bring the river demand to life, build a baseline signal, measure the bull with effect, translate that into a signal that everyone can use in the supply chain, and uh, then do bidirectional orchestration and horizontal processes like SNOP so that we can basically manage the buffers and realign based upon what's happening in the market. So I think it'll also be a great learning experience for people who maybe mm -hmm. haven't really thought about how to redesign work off of digital twins or how to think about NoSQL and unified data models and how to do this differently and how to go yeah. from inside out to outside in processes because sometimes these new forms of analytics are only understood by data scientists and it's rarefied and people don't know what to do next. So I'm excited about that aspect of the program as well. I am also really excited. And this, this topic in particular, I think, is one that will drive a lot of value to attendees is really a breath of fresh air for some conferences too, Laura, right? Asking and, and posing these big business questions about, you know, what are the questions as a business you want to ask? Map the data to those questions and then invite the technology into the room and figure out the art of the possible. Don't start with the technology. Don't start with those conversations first. Ask, start with the business questions, then figure out what the data can do to better figure out how to answer those questions is something that, you know, this, these new forms of technology, these conversations was a big takeaway for me last year. I know it, it's, we hear it time and time again, and you always hear it from the, the newest consultant on the block, but really having that as a key pillar for some of your conversations, Laura, was, was refreshing last year too. Well, and I think that if we listen to the data and we let the data drive the questions we should ask versus thinking we have to know the questions to ask, then it's just really enlightening. And last, mm -hmm. what I want to just talk a minute about is we're going to be touring the Air and Space Museum at the Smithsonian and or the guise of let's let our dreams take flight. And then we're going to have some structured activities at the Smithsonian to allow people to imagine how we can actually make the dreams happen. So I think it'll be a fun networking event as well as educational and uh, stimulating for us as we tie to extreme networking. Are you excited? I am. Not a bad place to do a brainstorming session if I do say so myself. Alex, how do you think people best prepare for the Global Summit? I would prepare in a few ways. One, there is the website. So supplychaininsightsglobalsummit.com is a great place to stay up to date on the recent agenda. And if you are considering registering, a great spot to register. I would also follow us on Twitter. You can find the links to the Twitter and LinkedIn, some tweets, and also really just staying up to date on any of the content we're posting here that Laura's podcast or her, her blogs there are also on the website and kind of just posted across our social media. So as long as you're staying connected across the Twitter, LinkedIn, and the website, you'll be in the know. Well, and also on the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit website, we have lots of the videos from all of the conference we've done in the past. Sometimes they're good to go back and look at because, you know, it gives people kind of a context of the vein of what we're trying to do and helps them to get ready. So, Alex, mm -hmm. I appreciate your help and the countdown for the Global Summit. It's September 6th through the 8th. It'll be in Washington, D.C. at the Westin near Dulles Airport. So people don't have to worry about a long drive into Washington. Just fly into the Dulles Airport and take the shuttle. And I welcome people to come and think about 2030 and really roll up their sleeves for extreme networking. How about you, Alex? Really looking forward to it. Thank you for including me on the journey here, Laura. And looking forward to, to meeting new folks and seeing familiar ones come September. Thanks. 
So Alex, thank you. And I look forward to it. And if anybody has any questions about the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit, check it out again. It's uh, supplychaininsightsglobalsummit.com. Until next time, the event's September 6th through the 8th. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Laura. Thank you.